Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to a Monday start of the work week here. It is the Earth Master on this April 8th, 2024 date, about 12, 12 p.m. here, California time. Latest earthquake activity shows some movement, uh, looks like a 1.6 into the Alaska area. We'll take a look at this here in just a little bit. First, well, we got the eclipse going on here. You can see the, uh, the moon's shadow. The eclipse totality um, occur currently occurring for some folks out here. Looks like around Illinois, Indiana area. And uh, I've seen Texas and Oklahoma already had their totality. But look at that beautiful shadow out here crossing over the Earth's surface there from the moon blocking out the sunlight there. Pretty neat to see. Now, cloud cover out here has been... Uh, well, in the area where I was supposed to go down into, into the uh, southern Texas area, has been quite cloudy out there, uh, as expected. A lot of the forecast models out here showed a lot of cloud cover uh, kicking up out here. For some areas around Dallas, Texas, and probably uh, around the Tyler, Texas area, northeast here, got uh, some clearing skies out there. I think even Austin area, well, Austin's right at the end of the uh, cloud cover range but Dallas, Texas area and regions over here, just high, very high, thin clouds. And they got a, a pretty decent view of the eclipse. Also up into Arkansas and probably up here around Illinois and Indiana right now is where the uh, totality is taking place here. It may already be over here. But uh, yeah, so at least we had some viewing opportunities out here. I'm kind of glad I didn't go down here to the Texas area where I was planning on going. I was just going to camp out outside of the uh, Uvalde area, just north here. And as you can see, a lot of cloud cover, precipitation already keying up, a lot of thunderstorms over here outside of the Houston area. But uh, goodness, I'm just, I'm happy that a few folks finally got to, uh, you know, be able to see it. It's one of those deals where the forecast models called for a lot of clouds here, a lot of considerable cloudiness across the totality line. But there are breaks out there, so I'm fairly happy about that. And again, um, out here in California, we've seen, uh, oh, it was, had about 37% of the sun that was eclipsed. Not a big deal. I did break out my sunglasses out here, or the uh, solar eclipse glasses, and uh, check that out uh, as it was occurring here. Peak for us was about an hour or so ago. And again, it was only about 37% coverage here in Northern California. But neat nonetheless, and uh, we'll have to wait for, uh, well, another 20 years before we see another great solar eclipse out here across the, uh, the states. All right, well, what do we got here for earthquake activity? Anything stirring up out here? New Madrid seismic zone, pretty quiet, not a whole lot going on. A couple more earthquakes up in the uh, New Jersey area. Although if you look, most of these are from late last night, so not a whole lot of new activity stirring up here today so far. We look at the big model here and see what's going on far as a uh, large earthquake activity. Still seeing some clustering going on here across the Taiwan area and just to the southwest of the Tokyo, Japan region. A lot of these quakes though from yesterday. Let's see what we got here for uh, today so far. As uh, far as the eighth goes, it looks like just a 4.9 here into the Fiji Islands area, 400, or 529 kilometers deep for that quake. Aside from that, uh, a lot of activity from yesterday, really no major elevated earthquake activity uh, associated with the uh, eclipse going on here. Uh, a little bit of movement out in Texas, but really things are awfully quiet as the eclipse is ongoing here. The West Coast, some smaller earthquake activity up here around Lake Almanor area. This is a region that's seen a uh, four-pointer out here recently, a couple four-pointers. Looks like some activity stirring up here outside the Mount Lassen area as well early this morning. Uh, not quite there into the park, just south of the Mount Lassen region, 2.2, about five kilometers deep. And um, Southern California looks about as quiet as can be. A lot of this activity from yesterday, some very small microquake activity out here today. If we pull up the 2.5 map and above, you can see right there that uh, the majority of those quakes disappear. Aside from a 3.2 here in the Clear Lake volcanic field, uh, this area, 
always seen earthquake activity, folks. Nothing new going on here. In fact, the last 30 days of earthquake activity shows, well, almost 2,000 earthquakes out here. So a lot goes on out here. There's a lot of geothermal plants, and uh, they there's a whole process involved in uh, creating that energy, and it does involve earthquakes as well. Pacific Northwest, fairly quiet. Nothing going on here across the Yellowstone supervolcano. I was just checking out these uh, the Texas webcams out here. Pretty neat to see. Um, this was put out, looks like, fairly recent. 2.16 uh, Central Time right there. Some clearing skies outside of the uh, Dallas-Fort Worth area. But uh, I'm, I'm just glad that a lot of people got to see the eclipse in those open areas. Goodness, it would have been a bummer had this been completely covered out here. But uh, a few folks got uh, lucky out there in the cloud cover. All right, uh, anything else going on here aside from some clustering going on? Hawaii, typical movement out here. No elevated activity right now. Really not a whole lot. Uh, down here across the Kerbedeck Trench, got a little earthquake there from yesterday. Not a whole lot of new activity down there today. That includes New Zealand area. Pretty quiet. Uh, so overall, you know, I, I can pretty much jump on here and say that things are a typical day out here in terms of the plate dynamics and the earthquake activity out here. Uh, the moon, sun, eclipse activity, not having any type of effect out here. Uh, across the plates for now. All right, Iceland activity. Let's go check out live from Iceland here real quick. That is the website to check out for the latest information, or at least the latest visual perspective here of what's going on there across the Iceland area. Still some fountaining going on. Looks like that north wall blew out here, um, the north crater area. A little bit less active today compared to yesterday when we seen that fountaining of uh, lava. Uh, but it's hard to tell from this view. It could be um, on this other side here where that um, blow, blew out, the blowout happened on that north crater wall. Let me see if we got uh, a little bit different view here. There's a little bit closer view. Still quite active. Uh, let's go check out the latest information here from the Icelandic Met Office. If they put one out, they did. Dated today. The eruption continues. One crater is active. Uh, here they're chatting about the impressive lava river that formed yesterday until the northern rim of the crater broke. And I was just chatting about that. So that uh, lava view is now probably on the north side there. As far as that beautiful river of magma coming up and lava flowing. So it looks like we're still seeing a little bit of land rise here in terms of inflation around two to three centimeters between the 2nd and the 7th of April. That could have something to do um, with the ongoing further volume of lava that's flowing out of that one crater area. This obviously could continue for quite some time as there is a continued supply of magma from the deeper areas below. Uh, got gas pollutions out here across the area. High levels of sulfur dioxide and whatnot around the uh, volcanic eruption areas. And in settlements on the Reckonist Peninsula. So it doesn't look like anything has changed here. Um, in terms of, you know, aside from a little bit of GPS displacement there in terms of inflation. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Neat little um, crater out there. Showing that uh, lava and continued volume of it. Unfortunately, it's uh, on the north side here now of that crater. But yesterday, it was just pouring out here. Almost, uh, it, it was a beautiful image. Just a river of lava flowing out from this crater area. All right, let's check out space weather activity. Anything major going on out here? Pretty quiet. About as quiet as it can be. Look at this. Very level solar flare activity down into the B flare class. Not a whole lot, folks. Uh, and in terms of any major sunspots, not a whole lot either. 3628 is a uh, pretty large sunspot, but uh, really uh, stable is the key word I'm looking for out here. Not a whole lot of threats right now. 35% chance for a C flare and obviously less than that for the other categories. We do have a uh, 
looks like this type of uh, prominence out here directly facing Earth. I don't think it's going to be eruptive out here, but it's something to keep an eye on. It is a, a fairly large one. A lot of times these will blast off and shoot out large amounts of plasma in the Earth-directed view, but uh, right now it's holding pretty steady. As far as the uh, far side of the sun, let's see if they've updated this yet today. Looks like, um, you know, this was put out um, last night, it looks like. There's a still decent sunspot out here that we're keeping an eye on. This is the far side of the sun, earth-facing side over here, eastern limb of the sun right here. It'll be here, oh, in a few days, in a week or so, maybe a little bit longer. It is... Um, the source of many M flares here recently when it was over here on the earth facing side, it's still quite dynamic looking. It's a huge sunspot and uh, we'll get a little peek of it again. If it holds steady uh, in the days ahead. All right. Now that the eclipse is over out there in Texas area, well, it's not completely over, but totality is um, we got a enhanced area of severe weather out there. And that includes a big area of tornado potential. So, uh, I think the main thing, though, is going to be some large hail associated with these thunderstorms today. So a lot of people traveled to this region. A lot of people are going to be heading home as well. Uh, potential traffic jams. And uh, unfortunately, when that takes place, that can back up the freeways and highways. And you get stuck underneath these large thunderstorms that produce baseball size hail or larger. Now, the hatched area includes all the populated regions there in Texas talking about San Antonio, Dallas, Austin, Fort Worth, Arlington area, large to giant hail. So maybe some grapefruits falling out of the sky. Do not want to get hit with one of those. All it takes is one of those to uh, make a, uh, make for a bad day tomorrow. That severe weather shifts a little bit to the east, but that uh, brings a little bit more tornado potential out here across eastern Texas and portions of Louisiana down here. So it's going to be a very active week in terms of the severe weather across the south. And uh, just heads up. All right, folks, I am going to jump off here again. Hopefully um, you guys got to see the eclipse. I got to see a, a very partial eclipse, but once you experience a totality eclipse, these little partial eclipses are not all that exciting. Trust me. Uh, it's, I mean, I guess it's still neat to see a little bit, but uh, the experience of a totality event is unlike anything else I've experienced and uh, really wanted to experience that again. But had I driven down here, I would be stuck underneath a lot of cloud cover and I'd be forced to probably drive, you know, many more hours up to the northeast here to cover it. But uh, we'll see where the next totality event happens. Uh, it's going to be another 20 years before it happens out here across the states. But uh, hey, if you got any cool pictures, any experiences you'd like to share, send me an email, earthmastermail at gmail.com. I look forward to any emails and uh, discussions out there that you may have, earthmastermail at gmail.com. For now, seismograph stations here, pretty quiet, not a whole lot going on. No major earthquake activity. Things are fairly quiet out here on the home front and on planet Earth, aside from the typical earthquake activity. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on this evening, folks. Stay safe out there. Have a safe drive home if you guys are... Uh, in an area where the totality was and you're headed back, it's going to be a lot of traffic and that severe weather potential out there today. Uh, here's all the thunderstorms firing up already. Huge cluster of storms outside and north of the Houston area. A lot of lightning, goodness. All right, catch you guys back out here a little bit later, folks. Have a good day.